Work Club today. Um, I'll go over a bit, something a bit um, um, advanced, uh, which is how to make an R package that has the Docker image. Those are the properties that we need uh, in order to make a package for the Bioconductor um, um, conference, particularly giving a worship. So um, you, have, you have the latest BioCDs version installed. Um, um, we'll be able to run these commands. So the first thing here, I'm going to create a, um, an example package with a use these create package function. So I'm going to call it by a C2023 worship, worship example. Um, and at this point, um, what this does is uh, it's going to start the new R2 window. Um, after creating, um, let me move you something. After creating, um, it creates a directory here um, in my um, desktop. Um, well, sorry, my computer, YC23 worship example, sets it as an actor project, creates the R directory, creates the description file with some content, creates the namespace, creates our studio project file, adds it to the R build ignore, um, and a few other things. Um, and so once we have our, our new package here, YC worship example, then we can use the YC these function, use YC package templates. Um, so that function creates a dev directory and four different scripts on it. I'm gonna to go to the first script. This is the one where it guides you on like, what are all the packages you need to install in order to basically at the end, be able to create the package um, and then create the templates. So we did everything from, from the first script. And I'm gonna go, um, um, I won't go into super detail um, among the rest of the steps here. Um, I'm just going to execute a lot of them. Um, because the point here is like, we've already covered how to make an R package. And basically, you just need to follow the, the, these uh, scripts. So I'm going to create the R project file, use git, which asks me right, if it's OK to commit all these files. I'll say yes. Um, then it says if you want to restart R Studio. Because right now, if you notice over here on the bottom left, I don't have the um, Git panel. I'll say yes to that. Um, they ask me if it's okay to quit. I'll say yes. Restarts. Um, and now you see we have a Git panel over here on the bottom left. Now, I added this step also, is that because now um, Bioconductor uses the DDL branch as the, D as the default one, um, and I added this step that I just renamed the GitHub branch to develop before you even create anything on, on, on GitHub. Um, the next uh, commands here are like, if you haven't configured your GitHub um, um, configuration, so we can skip all of those because I already have my laptop computer for that. So I'll use the use GitHub function. Um, this is a function that if you want to, you can use the organization argument on it. Um, um, uh, you can use a, you would check what are the arguments of that function. You use the organization argument and set that to Liber Institute if you want to create um, your repository on the Liber Institute account. Since this is just an example, I put it on my personal account. And we see here now we have um, uh, a, repos um, a repository with the same name as our package, we have a dev. Um, directory with the development scripts, um, a description file, the namespace file, even more and are building more. So we're, um, we're, we have the basics of our, of a package, and that's the end of the second script. We can nav navigate to the third script. And this is where like, there'll be a lot of things we need to do. First, we need to create a description file. Um, so we'll overwrite our current description file. We'll say yes to that. Um, then we'll go to the description file and edit it a bit. We need to write a little title here. Um, um, and then also a little description that has to have at least two sentences. Um, You said that we can try to load there in the description. Can you speak louder? Ah, oh, sorry. 
uh, you said that uh, there is a number of character, there is a limitation of the number of character for the description. No. Ah, okay. There's no limit. You have to have at least the sentences. Ah, okay. Thank you. Um, cool. So now I have uh, those two things. I could go back to the core file. We'll make the readme. Uh, I won't edit any of those contents right now. Uh, we'll build the readme file. Um, so that installs the package temporarily, and then we'll like render that readme file. Um, I'll add a news file. Um, then this is for like asking questions. Like I am asking, a, I'm adding a, a code of conduct, how to contribute, how to ask for help, um, a template for making issues, a template for feature requests. I'm adding a citation file that um, I'm going to delete the by archive entry over here. And I'll add a little title. If you don't add a title later on, you're going to get an error. Um, 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 I'll say that this is an experimental package. Um, I'll add all the bioconductor badges. There's a lot of little badges. Um, I'll also add a GitHub Actions badge. We'll say that we're um, testing and we'll add an example test here that two times two is equal to four, um, just to make sure it works. We'll say that we want to make sure that we know <clears throat> what percent of the lines of code that we have have been tested and we'll build the readme again. After that, we'll create a little vignette. Um, it's all empty for now. And the most important thing here, thing here is we're adding a GitHub Actions workload. Now, in contrast to Wednesday, I'm going to like create all the package, and then later on, I'll show you exactly what are the things we need to edit in order to make it um, um, a package that has a Docker image. Um, so one of the things we need to do here is we need to uh, add workload permissions such that it has read and write permissions. Um, cool. So once we've done that, um, um, we could check what the file says. Uh, we're gonna create the CSS file, which is gonna add those nice blue and green colors that are like uh, bioconductor colors. And at this point, there's a warning, you should make a commit before you move on to the next step. So I'll make a commit, select everything. Uh, um, Um, I'll even I'll even push it, um, and at this point, I'll run the package down and deploy the branch. This will like create the GitHub Pages branch, um, and uh, it failed because I actually didn't install the package. So I need to go to set uh, build and install package. I forgot to do that. Um, um, so this will be all the vignette, all the help files, if we have any, we don't really have any right now. Um, the news um, creates a GitHub pages branch, pushes it to GitHub. So if I refresh now, we'll see we have the well branch and the GitHub pages branch. Um, um, And so in a, in a little bit, we'll have a little um, a website for our package. Um, so that's running. In the meantime, we go to, we can go to the last script, which is the update script. Um, and so here we can like make sure all the code is styled uniformly. Um, um, yeah, so that changed a few files. Um, can make sure that we document the package so that updates the documentation files in the namespace, but we haven't really done anything there. We can rerun the the readme file because we updated the RMD file. So um, cool. 
So at this point, we have a package that uh, gets tested with GitHub Actions um, and that will automatically update. The website here, like we have a little uh, green check. So that means if I go to, um, I'm gonna copy this. If I go to my username, my GitHub username, github.io or slash the repository name, we now have a little website which I'll put it here on the, on the links. Cool. So we have our little website uh, for our package. Um, and if we, we look at reference, we don't have any functions. If we get look at the get started, uh, we have the template of the vignette but like we don't really have anything that's specific to this package yet. Uh, same thing with the readme, it's just how to install it, um, how to install it from GitHub. Um, and it has an example, R code, an example plot. It says how you can cite it um, um, as a link to the code of conduct. It has all the Biconductor badges, but this won't work until we actually submit the package to Biconductor, which we want in this particular case has other badges for like and GitHub issues, pull requests, saying that this is an experimental package, has a code coverage, which so far is unknown because it hasn't really run um, um, the GitHub Actions workflow just yet. So if you go to um, our repository, click on Actions, we'll notice that like um, after we made a commit of uh, core files, it's still running the GitHub Actions workflow for that. And same thing with the second commit for update. So we click on core files. Um, this one already failed. And it failed because we have a warning on our command check. And that warning comes from, if we check earlier, um, it says warning, we don't have any example files. <laughs> um, and so that's because we haven't made any functions yet. So at this point, we have the bones of a package. So this is where like things start to change and go beyond what's available on the use on the use bios um, on the bios this use bios package template functions. So here I'll use a use r function from use this, um, and I'm gonna call it like hello. So I'll just make a, a little function called hello, um, and that just says hello. Uh, we don't need it necessarily, you know, you could have a, a real function, <laughs> but this is just an example. With my cursor inside of the function, I can go to the magic wand and say, um, insert Roxygen skeleton. So that adds all the steps. I'll like, I'll add a little example, say hello. Um, we'll say that this function um, returns a character of length one with the word hello. We'll add a title to our function and a little description. Once I've done that, if I go back to the update, um, we can basically run the styler com commands and the document command. Uh, and so styler will make sure that like, the uh, style is consistent. And then the document function uh, created the name, uh, updated the namespace file, and then also created the uh, man hello.rd file, which is the documentation of our function. So it has a very specific format. You don't want to edit it by hand, as it says here by rock session two. Um, and then the namespace is just said like, oh, we have a function called hello that we're going to share with the world. Um, 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 so I'll push it, and at this point, our package will pass our command check because we do have a function that works that is well documented. Um, so all of that will work. However, it's going to fail next because um, it's not going to pass by a C check. And so I'm going to go back to the core files. There's this little command where you can open the Jamal file. 
Um, and so normally, uh, you, if you have already built a package like QSV or or or, or um, uh, special IBB or track, you don't necessarily need to do this. Uh, but because um, this will be like a package we're not really submitting to back and after, um, we need to disable some checks. So in particular, I'll disable the via CBU checks. And I know all of this because I, I did a package on Wednesday. Um, so I know like I need to add this build line. Um, so I'm not gonna wait for the GitHub actions to give us the error. Um, it takes like two, three minutes for that. Um, so I already, uh, um, already disable that. Cool. So if all if everything goes well, this will be the first GitHub action uh, that completes our command check, BIOS check, and then updates the package down website. Um, so uh, we'll uh, we'll be able to know all of this in a few minutes. Um, so we can see that our first one failed, our segment also failed because we hadn't added a function at that point. The added hello is going to fail, but at a later time point, it's going to fail at the BIOS check. Uh, right now, it's still like installing the, the dependencies. Um, so in, in a few minutes, we'll know that. Now, at this point, we have um, we have a package, um, an R package that um, uh, overall works pretty well, but does not have the properties we need for Docker. And so this is where things start to change. And, um, and I'm doing it this way so you can um, uh, notice a bit more the, like what are the things we would really need to change in order to make it, um, uh, in order to have a Docker image for the package. So we'll go back to this uh, use BIOC action function. Um, so we open the help file for it. Um, there's a lot of parameters, but one of the first ones is the BIOC Docker. Now, um, you don't need to specify it, and by default, we'll try to um, They'll try to guess what is the version of R that you're using right now and the version of my conductor. And then based on that, it'll say like a uh, release underscore X underscore Y. So for example, release 311. Right now, uh, the release version is 317. Um, and based on the instructions that people got for making these packages for the conference, they asked people to use 317 instead of DBL. Uh, so we don't really need to change that. Package down is an argument if you want to update your website. And so by default, I recommend, I mean, um, I recommend sending this to true. The default is false, um, unless you have options specifying this. Also for test that, the default is false. Um, so what I rec recommend doing is, um, we'll specify here, package down equals true. Because that equals true. Um, um, and then the last option over here is Docker. Um, um, and we'll say we want that also to be true. So in my case, um, on my R profile, I already have this option that I want the default for package down to be true and test that to be true. Um, um, but if you don't have that on, on your um, on your R profile, uh, at this point, we're, we're setting these two options to non-default values, as long as Docker. So um, I'll run that. It again opens this website. We already gave it read and write permissions, so we don't need to do anything there. Um, but it, what it did is, um, let's look at it more slowly. It created uh, the Docker file file, and then it made sure that file is ignored by our command build by putting it into this R build ignore file. Um, then it created that, and then it's asking me if it's okay to edit the YAML file. And I'll say yes to that. 
Um, cool. Um, and so we, if we look at the differences, um, our building Nor now ignores that Docker file. This Docker file was created, and you'll notice here they're saying like, oh, let's use release 317. Um, so that's what you want in this case. Um, it has all the other lines for installing the dependencies. Um, we edited manually this core file. But then if we look at the YAML file, we'll notice that at the very beginning, um, it changed this um, parameter from run Docker from false to true. Um, but then it's also, it's also resetting the change we had added here. So I'm gonna discard that chunk. So I'm gonna tell um, using our studio and basically uh, saying like undo that change. Um, and now I'll, um, now we'll say here like uh, set up Docker. Um, to, to. Now um, I'll push this, but it's actually going to fail. And it's going to fail because and we go to this YAML file, there's a lot of information on it, but at, at, uh, near the end of it for all the Docker steps, uh, it needs some secret information from us. It needs our Docker Hub username and our Docker Hub token. And so the way you can, um, um, the way you can add those things is first you need to get a token. So let's go to um, this website on uh, Docker Hub. If you don't have an account, you'll need to create an account first. Um, so I already have my account here with, with uh, four packages. So I'll go to settings and I'm gonna ask for a new access token. And so here I'll call it uh, by C. Um, I'll give you all the permissions. And my username is El Collado. And then right now here I have this personal access token. Um, so once I have that, um, we can go to um, um, our repository right now. Um, and we'll, we need to click on settings. And then um, under secrets and variables, we'll go to actions. And here we need to add two secrets. They need to be spelled the exact same way as we have them on the code. So the first one is Docker Hub underscore username. That one doesn't necessarily need to be a secret. It could have been like something you edit directly. Um, but we definitely need to have our Docker Hub token be secret because we don't want people to just read our code and be able to have our username and token information, right? We want that to be fully um, secret. So I'll add it there, I'll add the secrets. Um, and so at this point, we don't actually need to change anything in R, just in our actions. Um, I'll wait for the setup Docker to fail. Um, 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 uh, or actually, yeah, I'll, I'll come back to, the, to that in a little second. So now that we have a few more GitHub Actions results here, I'll go back in time and look at, for example, when we added the hello as an example function. So that still failed in Ubuntu, and that's because it did pass um, our command check, which is uh, why we added the function, right? So our command check was like happy. It said like, oh, zero errors, zero warnings, zero notes, everything is great. But then biasy check failed because um, it says we have one error and three notes. And if we look at what the error was, we just need to scroll up and find when it says error, it's here, error. Uh, we need to have other biasy views other than software, right? Um, and so uh, we don't, we would need to actually do all of this if we were submitting the package to the conductor. But in this case, we, we don't necessarily want to deal with all of that. So that's why we um, made a change and disabled the BIOS check. Um, and so as I told you, this was going to be our first commit that actually ran properly. 
And so we look at uh, bias sheet check. At the end of it, it says zero error, zero warnings, three notes, because we're ignoring that bias you use check. And so then it can go and test the package, uh, build the package on website, deploy it. And so if I refresh the website for the package, um, well, if I refresh it, um, on the reference, now we have our hello function, right? It was, uh, the website was automatically updated and we have that. Uh, you go to actions now, set up Docker to true, we look at Ubuntu, um, and uh, um, um, it also did a lot of these things, but um, um, it hasn't started the, the package, the, the Docker one. Um, maybe because I edited the settings as it was running, might have worked. <laughs> um, but in any case, what well, I'm just going to cancel it. And um, um, yeah, okay. Now that I have canceled, I want to click on rerun, rerun all jobs. Um, and so that's because we didn't need to change anything on the on the code side. We, now that we've given it the secret information, um, it can it should be able to run. And so what will happen is that in a, this will take a few minutes, but eventually we're going to get an image. So this is the one for the one I made on Wednesday. Um, and so um, at this point, we have our Docker image that people can download and we'll have all the dependencies needed to run our package. Um, like we'll have R, uh, we'll have all the system dependencies uh, for R and also for any package that we're using. Um, so at this point, we now have a, a package that is uh, that has its Docker image that is automatically gonna be updated based on any changes we make. And so a common change that you're gonna be making on a workshop package is uh, editing the vignette. So let's say um, um, uh, let's say we wanna here like use um, let's say we're, we wanna like um, load the summarize experiment package. Um, oops, I need to load the package on my computer. And if I look at all the help files, I'll copy paste. Okay. Um, so we want to run that exam, right? Um, so here we're loading a package and using it. Um, since we need to tell GitHub Actions to install Summarize Experiment, um, for, our for our package to work, we're going to use the use this function, use package, and we'll say like the package name is summarize experiment, and type will say suggests. Um, cool. So what that function did is that it uh, edited the description file. Um, and so I'll make a little commit here. Um, actually, before I do that, I'll go back to our update um, uh, update script and I'll style the vignette. Um, oh. um, so that just uh, form formatted nicely all the code. Um, so here's like an example of adding. Cool. 
So at this point, like now our GitHub Actions workflow is going to take longer to run because we're installing a summarized experiment and all of its dependencies. Um, cool. So let me see how the GitHub Actions are going. Uh, they're still in progress. Um, so I'll come back to this in a, in a, in a um, we can come back to this later. So um, at this point, I think this, this will be the end of the recording that I'll make public. Um, uh, but um, I asked Fernanda, Diana, and Nick to be ready to screen share, right? Um, so we can now um, help them debug their own package. Um, so I don't know which one of you is going to be the, the one screen sharing. And then we could also do the same thing with Hedia or Louise. Or, I don't know, even me. Huh? I can do it, because here's there. Okay, I can share my screen. Okay. <laughs> So basically, we have these files. Mm -hmm. I think the first problem is that we don't have the check file, the YML. I don't know why. Mm -hmm. Cool. So let me, I want to ask uh, permission to control your computer. Yeah, thank you. Um, yesterday, I, uh, because as you said on Wednesday, uh, we needed, we, we needed. Um, we were working on the like tutorial that they sent us that Sean Davis built. Uh, but as you said, Diana and I were like really confused. So I decided to make like almost everything from scratch with Biosy. And I think it's working, but um, we still have a lot of uh, the little like errors you you just mentioned. Um, so yeah, I think that's the most, uh, I don't know if important, but maybe, uh, to work on it today. So which one we want to edit? Uh, so maybe Diana, if you go to, or Leo, if you go to the GitHub, uh, account, we can see like all the, errors we have related to the build. Uh, it sounds like you have two different repositories, right? Which one do you want me to fix? No, we no longer have the Sean Davis. Uh, oh, okay, okay, cool. Yeah, this one is the one I built yesterday with BioCities. All right, cool. All right, so we'll look at, uh, I think what you want us to look at is the last GitHub Actions report um yeah i don't know it's like not opening so it was opening cool um, um so you mm, i don't recognize this um sounds like you have a different set of yaml files so let's go back to um uh um to the package hold on there dot github and workflows someone's phone is ringing mm -hmm. i think it's a seems to be your phone okay uh cool so i'll just delete uh, yeah yeah that's um, fine. Renee, would you mind screen sharing instead of Diana? I think Diana is um, internet is a bit slow, so like anything I do, it's a bit delayed. Yeah. Okay. Sorry about that, Diana. Uh, no problem. So I have here the package and uh, here. Oh. Here. Right, cool. Proof. Okay. Right. So, okay. Um, so, if we go to actions, 
right? You're saying this was the last one you ran? Uh, yeah, this was from Diana, uh, mm -hmm. like one hour ago, I think. Yeah, but that one is doing different things. Mm. Yeah, I think these are actions from the marketplace. I just saw the, okay. the original file for the band. Okay, so here you have this um, basic checks ML file that um, I think you got from Sean Davis. I'm gonna delete that one. Yeah, okay. Um, uh, then check by a C. Uh, well, so this is, the, this is the one you built with uh, with Bios series, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So you can see that it has run Docker true. Uh, yeah. Um, test that. I true. changed some of those yesterday. Uh, but yeah, only only in here I changed things in this file. Mm -hmm. Cool. I can see that you're using R4.3, YC317, Docker317. All that is okay. Um, let's go to your um, Docker file. Um, this one is wrong um, uh, because it's it's not using release 317. Um, so on the console. The easy thing will be to run by a CDs, use by C GitHub action. Um, by a C Docker. Okay. Mm. Um. Yeah, you have read and write permissions, cool. Yeah. Um, and then it asks you want to override the Docker file. I want to say yes to that. Yeah, okay. Uh, so that changes that file. Okay. It's proper set up now. Cool. Then it asks you want to read the um, uh, workflows. One, I'm going to say yes to that. Cool. Um, so you go on Git and check the differences. We now have a Docker file on the R building norm, which um, I didn't realize we were missing that too. Um, we fixed the Docker file too, also. Um, it was very similar, but we mostly changed the Docker image that is gonna be built on top of. Um, and I guess now on the other file, the only change was um, uh, making it such that it, it does run Kovar. Um, What's Kovar, sorry? Mm -hmm. That's for the coverage, oh, uh, for checking what percent of the lines of code in your package have been tested. Um, okay. We could we could ignore that change because your your package is really for really vignettes. It doesn't. It's not supposed to have functions. Um, yes. Okay. You want to look at an uh, 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 discard that chunk. We don't necessarily need to run Kovar. Um, Let's push it. Your your computer has a low battery. <laughs> as always, I'll I'll plug it in. So that will um, trigger a new GitHub action workflow. But I think you also have other problems unrelated to this, um, unrelated to Docker. Um, but let's click first on settings. Um, secret and variables, actions. Uh, so you haven't created any of your settings uh, of your secrets just yet. Um, no. uh, do you have an account on Docker Cloud? Uh, yeah. Cool. 
Yeah. Um, so we'll get the link here. <laughs> No, oh, sorry, it wasn't there. Um, Which one do you want? Um, okay. Is it like a mal file at the very end? This link. Mm -hmm. So we'll create a new token. What's the name of your package? Uh, Worship 2023. Yeah. Mm. Secret. Right in your secrets. Mm -hmm. Um, cool. So in theory, it's configured properly, but you miss, you might still have errors, right? So we go to uh, and check what has failed in the past. Um, it looks like argument check fails, um, and that's because you're trying to load a package that does not exist. The worship twenty twenty package. It looks like you copy pasted code from that twenty twenty. Um, a repository. Um, and so let's uh, go to edit um, find files. I'll just say search for 2020. Uh, you have a license file from 2020. Looks like you copy things that are not needed. Uh, I'll delete those two license files. Um, um, okay, so you can see here on the citation of um, um, you're trying to cite a package that does not exist. You're trying to cite the because you worship 2020. Probably want to be signed in the 2023 one. Um, if we go to the top to see how you define citations, uh, you actually haven't defined that citation just yet either. Um, Any what? Sorry. Oh, you call it speakeasy. You call it speakeasy. Okay. Um, Oh. Um, so your GitHub Actions workflow takes a while to run, like 40 minutes, because <laughs> uh, you have it installs a lot of dependencies and things like that. So we won't know until for quite a while whether that was the only thing you had or you had to also fix other, other things. Um, um, like, um, I don't think I've seen other errors. Mm. Yeah, you had the same error. You didn't have this big easy worship 2020. Uh, all right. So those were errors independent of the of the package setup. Um, 
this is also why like it's best to set up GitHub Actions early on, um, get it up and working, and then um, incrementally make updates so you know if you're breaking anything. Uh, I'll screen share again and see how we're going with our GitHub Actions. Oh, so this is the one that was running earlier um, for what I had set up. Um, you, you can see now on my, pro on my profile, now it does have the, the image for BIOS C2023 workshop example. It's all lowercase as, it, as Docker likes it to be. Um, um, yeah, so it, it did complete everything we needed. Um, and if we go to the next commit where we added a package dependency, that also updated the, the Docker image. And then we click on, um, it would check the, the website again. On the vignette, I added this like use summarize experiment section. So now we can see it does load the package and it does um, use that dependency and show the results of that piece of code. Um, so that's how you would make any of these packages, right? Um, now I know that um, um, a few of you uh, can send me some questions. I'll try to um, um, go over a bit. Um, so um, one question was like, what are the other things we need to do beyond, beyond or besides use GitHub, use by C GitHub action, Docker true. So I think I covered that a bit today by like the way I explain things. Um, also, what are the, some of the manual edits and the secret variables data that you have to do that all on GitHub and Docker Hub. Um, so that's some of the things I try to explain. Then some of the questions I got were related to the third script. So one question was about um, life, this, the life cycle batch. This is completely optional. Um, so you don't necessarily need to do it. But this function over here of life cycle batch, um, if we go to the website of our uh, package, that adds this little um, badge over here, life cycle experimental. And we click on it. Um, the idea of this life cycle um, uh, website is that you can label to your users, is this a package that is like deprecated? So that means like it's no longer being updated. Um, is it experimental, something you're testing things on? Is it like stable and people can like depend on it and build upon it? Right, or like, has it been superseded? So this is useful to provide. It's basically you're like um, flagging the status of your of your package. Uh, that was one question I got. Um, another question was the biasy badges. Um, so that adds a lot of badges, um, and we can see that has all these biopsy release status, email status, download rank, support, history, last commit dependencies. All of those badges um, um, are from Biconductor. So if I go to the actual Biconductor package, so let's say uh, special IPD, well, let's go to their file. Um, this is the release version of their finder. You see how a lot of different badges here, which tell us like, is it building on all operating systems? Have we had any questions? How long has it been in Bioconductor? All that information that can be useful for, for users. Um, that is part of the, of the website at Bioconductor. Uh, we basically try to replicate all of that information in our package. Um, if your package is not going to be submitted to Bioconductor, you don't necessarily need to add those badges because um, uh, it's only once your package has been accepted by conductor that these badges get created. That's why, like, if we look at um, um, at our example package uh, that we made, all of these badges over here are like um, they don't show anything right now. So that that could be an optional. You don't necessarily need to run that. Um, then the GitHub Actions badge that adds. A little batch uh, for 
um, uh, connecting. Um, so for some reason right now it's not working on this package, but if I go to special like um, that adds this uh, batch over here that tells us like whether well, is it passing the, the GitHub Actions workflow or not. For some reason here, special ABD was failing it. Um, uh, I, I don't remember why it was failing it. Um, but it tells you like the status of the last GitHub Actions run. So that one I do think is useful. Then another question I got was about the use coverage function over here. So that's related to the cover package and that adds also a batch of um, 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 wait. I just have special the at least special Yeah. Oh, uh, it was here. Um, that adds this little batch over here, code cop. In this case, it's six percent. I'll catch you in a little minute, uh, Luis. At the seminar, uh, but it tells us like what percent of the code has been tested, and in special ABD, only six percent of the code has been tested. If we go to, uh, um, is it low or that's pretty low? Um, we go to like recon, for example, over here it has seventy five percent. Um, some other packages have a lot higher. Then. The last question I got was about um, the package down uh, CSS file. So that creates um, on your um, on your computer, it creates uh, this extra .css file. And this was created by um, Kevin Rue Albert. Um, he um, made it for the IC package. And that's the pack, that's this is the file that basically specifies that you want to have these nice blue and green colors that are the bioconductor colors. Um, so I like using that because it makes it look like a bioconductor package. Um, cool. Um, so I need to go, but um, I'll post the link and um, let us know, Renee and Diana, how it goes. Um, how your GitHub Actions uh, complete.